Hi, my name is Jacqueline Watson. I am an attorney and partner at Walker Gates Vela, and I'm joined by my law partner, uh, Jose Chito Vela. And we are going to discuss today something that's very important and very uh, recently become a big, huge issue for some of our clients, and those are what are called crimes of domestic violence. And we wanted to talk today about what they are, uh, what how they can affect your immigration status, and what to do if you're accused of, of a crime of domestic violence. Um, Chito is our resident expert on criminal law, on state criminal law, and uh, I myself limit my limit my practice to federal immigration law, but as we all know, the two combine and one has a great impact on the other in a lot of circumstances, domestic violence being one of them. So Chito, I guess my first question to you is what exactly is a crime of domestic violence in Texas? What does that look like? So a crime of, uh, of domestic violence, and it would be considered a, a, an assault. It's just a regular assault, uh, but then there's a finding in certain cases when the assault is against uh, someone in your household. Uh, and that doesn't just mean, you know, your wife, your girlfriend, that could be your parents, could be a brother, a sister, uh, could be a roommate. Uh, if there's a, a finding of family violence, meaning that there was somebody in your household, then it becomes kind of an assault family violence uh, uh, offense. Um, and the one thing that I would stress is that uh, an assault is defined as, as, as contact uh, that causes injury. An injury is a very, very broadly defined anything that causes pain. In other words, if the person that you touched uh, says, that hurt me, then that is a class A assault misdemeanor in, uh, in Texas. Very, very minimal threshold to get to that class A level. Uh, I've seen many cases where a push uh, you know, and, and pushing somebody against a wall and then the person says, it, did it hurt you? Yes, it did hurt me. There we are. You know, even though you didn't punch them, you know, there's no, no, no injury, there's no blood, there's no bruise, there's no nothing like that. Um, I had a case that we ended up taking to trial uh, and, and unfortunately we lost, but the uh, uh, person, the husband had basically wrestled a, a cell phone away from his wife because he wanted to see you know, who had just texted her or something like that. And then, you know, he just kind of wrestled it out of her hand, looked, and it wasn't anybody. And then he just gave her the phone back. Um, and uh, unfortunately, I mean, she said that, that yes, when he took the phone out of my hand, it did, it hurt me. Uh, and, and the jury went back and, and, and they said that, yes, that's enough for uh, assault, uh, a family violence misdemeanor conviction. So it's really very little uh, uh, that, that, that can lead to uh, that type of, uh, of, of conviction. So, and, and just to clarify, Chief, the one follow up, uh, do, do, is, a prosecu is a prosecution required to show any kind of history of assault or abuse or anything like that? Or can it be a one-time incident? It can absolutely be a one-time incident. Uh, if it's a one-time incident, they're usually more willing to work with you uh, with regard to what the, the, the final outcome, if they're going to dismiss it or not. Uh, if it's a pattern, uh, oof, that, that's where you start getting it. It becomes very difficult uh, when, you know, they're saying, oh, this is, you know, the, 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 it happens all the time. And this is the first time we've called the police. Uh, they, they take those charges seriously especially here in Travis County and not just here in Travis County, but, you know, in almost all the surrounding counties uh, here in Austin uh, and San Antonio as well, uh, they take those charges very seriously. They, they, they are going to, you know, uh, uh, push it. They're going to uh, investigate. It's not something where they're just going to be like, oh, there's no big deal. We're just going to dismiss it. Uh, it, it. You know, they take it seriously. So you, as a person that's accused, as a defendant, you better take it seriously too. So... Um, what I would, uh, uh, what effect does a, assuming let's say you do get a conviction uh, and you're a, a legal permanent resident, uh, uh, what can happen to you, Jackie? Well, that's, you know, that's the, that's the thing. A, a domestic a assault family violence charge is what we call it in Texas, of course. Um, you can lose your law, you can lose your lawful permanent residency. You can lose your green card over one conviction for a class A misdemeanor um, assault if it has that family violence designation on it, especially if you and and you would you would lose it 
especially in cases where you have a recent green card, like you've only recently got your green card, you only recently immigrated, or you only recently adjusted your status. Um, if you don't have at least seven years of, of lawful presence and five years with that card, then you won't even have a waiver available. Now, in some cases, you may be eligible to re-immigrate, but we are talking a long process, an expensive process. You could possibly be detained. You could possibly uh, be denied a bond if the judge finds that you're a danger to the community as a result of that conviction. So it is a, it could be a life-changing event for um, a lawful permanent resident holder, even one that has many years living in the United States. Yeah, no, uh, absolutely. Uh, what about someone that is, is not, uh, you know, a green card holder, not a legal permanent resident, that is an undocumented immigrant, whether they enter with a visa or they, they you know, cross a river or whatever, what, 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 how can uh, that type of conviction affect them? Well, it, if, if the person is seeking perhaps cancellation of removal, they could be ineligible. So if they're seeking cancellation of removal for non-permanent residents, because it's a benefit that um, Congress has decided they only want a very small category of people to be eligible for, a conviction that would make someone deportable the same way that, that a green card holder would be, will also make you ineligible for cancellation of removal for non-permanent residents. Uh, if you have um, an ability to perhaps immigrate in the future, or through consular processing or through adjustment of status, that domestic violence conviction actually will not be a bar because a domestic violence conviction is not a ground of inadmissibility. And uh, so, and it's not a crime involving moral turpitude because of the very, very low level of mens rea or, or um, guilty mind that's required in order to commit the offense. Mm -hmm. So, the, the person who might have an ability to adjust in the future or adjust their status is in the best position because that, that won't affect them um, in terms of barring them from admission. It could affect anything discretionary, however. Usually in my experience, if there's only one conviction, uh, then, then usually you can have positive equities that would outweigh a, a convi conviction for domestic violence uh, or fa assault family violence. Now, if However, you are the person who is convicted is has been abused um, either emotionally or physically by a lawful permanent resident spouse or parent, then or or adult son or daughter, then possibly they could get a waiver of that domestic violence conviction if they can show that there's a connection to the um, arrest, uh, the conviction. If they can show there's a connection to the conviction and uh, their own abuse. So there may be a way out, but that would be in really special circumstances. And, and yeah. so for the most part, it's going gonna, it's gonna to hurt a lot of people. Yeah, uh, absolutely. And I think that's if you are an immigrant, uh, whether a legal immigrant or an undocumented immigrant, uh, it, you and, and you're facing this type of conviction or I would say even if you, you know, have an old one, you know, from from uh, 2005, there was something that happened and I, I dealt with it. But, you know, you really need to talk to an immigration attorney, uh, you know, potentially a criminal defense attorney. Also, you know, we can potentially even go back and reopen old cases, uh, uh, depending on the circumstances. It gets real complicated, but th this can be a real bar to your, you know, your future in the country. Uh, and, and, and if you're dealing with this kind of situation, you need really good legal counsel. Right. So, so on that note, Chito, what do you do if you're accused of you've been arrested of a of a of a domestic violence crime of assault, family violence? So, uh, again, the prosecutor is going to take it seriously. Uh, so, so you need to take it seriously, and the prosecutors are also going to want uh, 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 want to know that uh, that that you're 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 taking it seriously that you're uh learned from uh, whatever happened you know they don't want to see this as a continuing problem so a lot of times uh what uh, uh in these cases the first thing i'm gonna have my clients do is i want them to go and uh enroll in in in, in classes uh in uh, counseling for you know domestic violence there's different programs uh where you know you can enroll in them i'm, I'm familiar with them I've, I've you know handled many of these cases before and and you know once if my client right away is enrolled in the program and they're taking the classes and they're doing everything um, a lot of times we'll reach out to you know the the, the 
wife, the girlfriend, the whoever it is, uh, and, uh, and, and, and get a letter from them also, uh, uh, you know, saying that they don't want to prosecute, that, you know, uh, uh, explaining like the, the circumstances, if, if, if there's something to, to explain, you know, so, so these are the kind of cases that we really need to work. Um, you know, it's not uh, just something that you just sit back and wait. It's something that we really want to engage with the with the prosecutor, show them that that uh, that this was a uh, an exceptional kind of situation. Something's not going to happen again. That you're getting the kind of the counseling and 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 and, and learning to you know a lot of times couples go into counseling. You know, a lot of times there's deeper problems than just, you know, the one incident there, there's, you know, and, and, and those are all good things, you know, uh, uh, you know, it, it helps to show that, that, that it's, it's being addressed. Uh, and, and again, the goal is always to try and, 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 you know, potentially get it dismissed. Um, you know, if we can't get it dismissed, then uh, we've got to be prepared to go to trial. You know, these are, again, I mean, this is fatal if you're a legal permanent resident. So, I mean, you've got to be ready to fight to the bitter end. Uh, and, and, you know, even if it's a tough case, you know, you if all they're offering is a conviction, uh, you know, you have to go to trial because you never know what happens when you go to trial. Uh, weird things happen and, and all of a sudden you get a deal uh, right before trial uh, that, that you wouldn't have gotten, you know, and so sometimes you just have to push it and push it and push it and push it and hope that, you know, the day of trial, even though we're ready to go, oh, they, are, they gave us a good offer, let's go, you know, and, and let's get out of there and, and, uh, and, and resolve the, the, the case. Um, but, you know, just very harmful, very dangerous for immigrants and, and got to be prepared to, uh, to, to fight it on the, on the, on the criminal side. And uh, on a side note, uh, related to the issue of, of an assault family violence, a lot of times when there is an arrest for assault family violence, there's also a protective order that goes along with it. Can you talk about, like, you know, advising your clients about how important it is not to violate these protective orders? That's a whole other ground of inadmissibility there, of, 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 of you know, of, uh, of, of removability, actually, because uh, the violation of a protective order uh, is a whole other crime uh, and is in many ways almost worse than, uh, than, than a, a domestic violence uh, conviction. But uh, so, so that's one, you know, a lot of times um, the, they will issue what there's called uh, an emergency protective order, uh, which is good for, uh, you know, typically about 60 days, 90 days, um, and where you're not supposed to, you know, have any contact with the person, no harassing, you have to stay away from the home, those kinds of things like that. Again, you have to take that very, very, very seriously. Uh, we can get those lifted. Uh, you know, we can, you know, once, two weeks into it, whatever the case may be, you know, we can oftentimes get those lifted, but you just have to be very respectful of the conditions that the court sets, of the conditions on your bond, of, uh, you know, obeying any kind of uh, protective order. Um, you know, again, I mean, you can, I, I, we've, we've seen these cases, Jackie, you know, just deteriorate. I, you know, I, where, I was just going to say, we've seen, we've seen um, clients step into this kind of uh, not understanding how serious that protective order is and violating it almost immediately after their arrest, yep. uh, even inadvertently or not not really, really intentionally, but just not understanding yeah. what these protective orders contain and how seriously they are enforced. Uh, absolutely. Uh, absolutely. So, uh, you know, you just got to, you know, many, many times, you know, you got to find another place to stay for a while you know, with a friend, with a relative, you know, something like that. Uh, and, and just on another note, you know, if, if you're uh, detained by immigration after a, a domestic violence arrest, uh, those, are all, those are tough bonds to get. You know, it's changing right now. Immigration is, is easing up a, a, a little bit on, on, on some of these cases. But, uh, but, you know, again, the judge is, the immigration judge is going to be very uh, cautious uh, and is going to want to know the facts and circumstances and is going to want to make sure that there's no, you know, future danger uh, before uh, granting you a bond. So, uh, so again, don't, you know, and walk away. You know, don't, don't, you know, the fights. And so many times it's not even the person that calls, it's a neighbor. You know, the neighbor here is yelling in the apartment and they call and the police show up and no one wants to, to prosecute this case, but, you know, the police showed up and they asked questions and they, you know, they're arresting somebody. Mm -hmm. So um, just just be very, very careful, you know, uh, with uh, with any type of, uh, you know, physical altercations among, uh, I mean, among anybody, but particularly with, you know, your spouse, your significant other, you know, your girlfriend, boyfriend, those yeah. kinds of uh, situations. Or sometimes the kids call. The kids don't understand. Like that's, you know, that's even uh, worse. That looks bad. <laughs> yeah. There's nothing worse than, you know, 
a 911 call with a 10 year old calling and saying like, you know, daddy is, is, is hurting mommy. Please yeah. send the police. Oh, those are, I mean, oof, those are real, real rough situations. Uh, you know, so, so again, just, just, uh, you know, avoid family violence. It's, it's, it's a damaging, it's very damaging, not just for immigration, but just for everybody involved. Uh, and, and it's something that, that the law takes very seriously and, and, and we have to be very, you know, cautious with and respectful of, uh, you know, just as attorneys, as people, you know. So. And I think now that people have been under quarantine for a year, economy's bad, people are losing their jobs, I think tempers are, are high. Mm -hmm. um, they, you know, if you, if you, we, we as, as Walker Gates Valley, we encourage anyone who thinks that, you know, they may have a family situation getting out of control before it gets out of control, please get counseling. Mm -hmm. um, like you say, walk away, mm -hmm. uh, find ways to cope. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, you, the, the, the assault, assault family violence charge is absolutely no joke. Mm -hmm. And um, we've seen lives destroyed even, even worse than the, the consequence of, of a class A misdemeanor criminally can often be less than the immigration consequence that follows afterwards. Yeah, I, I, you know, and the worst thing is like these, a, a class A assault family violence, they plead for like one day in jail. You know, and then it was no big deal. Like uh, it's over, it's closed. No, man. Now you just basically lost your 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 green card. You know, you just lost your permanent residency by clinging to that. So, um, you know, even if they're offering you, if it doesn't seem like it's going to hurt you, it can. Uh, if you're an immigrant and you just have to be, uh, you have to take it seriously, and you need good legal counsel, uh, and that's where we come in. You know, mm -hmm. so. Uh, uh, please uh, uh, call us, 512-633-1785 uh, is the main line here in Austin. Uh, we're on Facebook, we're on Twitter, uh, our website, uh, you can make appointments. Uh, you know, please uh, reach out, subscribe to our, our YouTube page, um, and, uh, and, and we're here to serve the immigrant community. Yeah, and, and if you already have a conviction uh, and you are a lawful permanent resident, please come talk to us also. Don't get complacent. Don't file any citizenship application until you have your convictions reviewed by, by a, quali uh, a qualified attorney. We have board certified attorneys here. We have decades of experience altogether. And, um, you know, we, we do these videos. We want to help. Keep looking for more videos. We, we have, uh, we try to keep everybody up to date on what's happening and, and um, you know, how, how the, uh, how the immigration law can can affect you yeah, and um, the newest development. So subscribe, keep watching, and we'll see y'all later. Bye. Bye.